Hi everyone, I'm David Globke, and thank you for joining another exciting Harman Professional launch event. Today we're bringing you the newest in our SVSI networked AV product family, the N2600 series of encoders and decoders. Carrying on the AMX tradition of enterprise grade network performance and amazing 4K60 video, the N2600 series introduces new streaming capabilities, new connectivity, an extended form factor, and surprisingly affordable pricing that's designed to fit your project budget. For everyone who's looking to do more but with less, while not compromising on the quality you've come to expect, this is your new networked AV solution. In our event today, you'll meet AMX SVSI product manager Kyle Barron, who will take you through an overview of the product and followed by a series of feature-focused videos where we'll dive a bit deeper on some of the unique features of these products. And then after a panel discussion with Colin and Kyle, I'll be back to wrap things up at the end, so let's get to it. Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Barron, the SVSI product manager for AMX. Thank you for joining us for another exciting AMX new product launch. From the brand that brought you the market's first complete enterprise grade networked AV portfolio, the first standards based 4K networked AV encoders and decoders, the first purely IP based video window processing and so much more. We're excited to bring you something new, a new series of 4K60 encoders and decoders that have been built to not only be more affordable, but also to do more for you, a lot more. If you're someone who wants to leverage more from your networked AV investment, someone who demands enterprise level performance, no matter where you're installing, someone who wants their networked AV technology to be secure, adhering to mature IT network standards, and you just want network AV to be simple to configure and even easier to manage, this is your event. This is your solution. Introducing the SVSI N2600 series. N2600 series encoders and decoders are a cost-effective AV over IP solution, but they're also packed with many features. They use a high-quality, low-latency 4K60-444 codec that works great for transmitting both live video and detailed content. All 2600 devices also include the ability to transport full bandwidth USB 2.0 signals between encoders and decoders video preview images that are viewable from the built-in web interface or from a touch panel, an enterprise-grade networking technology that enables them to be placed on high security networks. N2600 series encoders and decoders are available in wall plate form factors in both US and UK or European style. Wall plate encoders include both an HDMI input and USB-C input that supports both video and USB 2.0 on the same connector. The N2625 is the first wall plate decoder from AMX and can be used to create an elegant and secure installation when installed behind a wall mounted display. N2600 series encoders and decoders are available as standalone boxes and the encoder is available as a card that fits into the existing SVSI card frame for better cooling more flexible power options, and a more compact rack mount installation 
when lots of encoders are required. In addition to the features of standard N2600 devices, models with the S designation add support for a high compatibility, low bandwidth 1080p H.264 stream that is great for distributing video over congested networks and is compatible with third-party devices. S-model encoders can output streams using both the high-quality, low-latency MWC codec and the high-compatibility, low-bandwidth H.264 codec simultaneously. Now, let's take a closer look at some of the key N2600 series features in detail. AMX encoders and decoders have always included the ability to transport and switch USB signals for HID devices like keyboards and mice. But today's flexible meeting spaces where bring your own device and soft video codecs such as WebEx, Teams, Zoom, and Meet have become the norm. Use USB for more than just keyboards and mice. To help in those situations, we've added full bandwidth USB 2.0 transport and switching to the N2600 series. Simply connect your USB camera or conferencing soundbar to the USB port on an N2600 decoder. That's generally easy if there's one behind the display near where it's mounted. And connect your laptop to an encoder and the USB device is available to use. With N2600 encoders and decoders, you can now transport video, audio, control, and 480 megabits of USB 2.0 over nearly any distance using standard one gigabit networks.
We call the N2600 Series S model encoders multi-codec, dual stream encoders. They are able to generate both a high quality, low latency 4K60, 444 stream using a codec we call MWC and a high compatibility, low bandwidth 1080p stream using the H.264 codec simultaneously. The 4K60 MWC video stream works great for transmitting both live video and detailed content over the one gig network within a room, building, or campus. The H.264 video stream requires very little network bandwidth. It is great for distributing video over congested networks, between campuses over limited WANs, or for streaming video to the internet. The H.264 is the most commonly used codec for AV over IP recording systems and internet streaming services, and allows N2600 devices to stream directly to countless third-party devices or services. We've even included pre-configured H.264 profile options for Panopto, Wowza, YouTube, and Facebook to make connecting to them extremely simple. Hybrid learning classrooms, for instance, can leverage N2600S encoders to get the best of both worlds without the added cost of purchasing multiple encoders. With a single N2600S encoder, a lesson content can be shared within the classroom and building at extremely high resolution and video fidelity while simultaneously streaming H.264 to remote learners on the internet. H.264 support also makes the N2600S models compatible with our N3000 series, H.264 encoders, decoders, and window processors. If you already have N3000 devices and are looking to expand your installation, you can acquire an N2600S device, select the N3000 H.264 profile, and add it to your network. The N2600 series has been designed to include the enterprise-grade security, networking manageability, and energy-saving technologies required for the most secure enterprise and government facilities. Video encryption, 802.1x, secure LDAP user authentication, and support for the latest cryptographic modules are some of the key security features built into the N2600 series. Of course, all SVSI devices support multicast video streaming to allow bandwidth management on converged networks. To provide network administrators even more control, the N2600 series also supports VLAN tagging, quality of service, and DSCP priorities. These tools allow for additional layers of separation and security, and help ensure the highest quality signals with minimal impact to other network traffic. Energy management is key to the enterprise, both to support green initiatives and for the cost savings. N2600 series wall plates require only 802.3 AF PoE power, and S model boxes and cards require only 802.3 AT PoE plus. To save even more energy, N2600 devices have a low power mode. When not being used to encode or decode video, control commands can shut down all but the critical components required to listen for a wake command. In this mode, N2600 devices use very little power, saving energy, money, and the environment. The N2600 series benefits from being part of the widest and deepest portfolio of AV over IP solutions in the marketplace. In addition to encoders and decoders, the SVSI portfolio offers video windowing processors and an audio transceiver. The N2600 series is compatible with the N3510 H.264 windowing processor. The N3510 can combine up to nine H.264 streams into a single stream. The window configuration can be adjusted dynamically through a simple to use web interface. And if nine windows aren't enough, multiple N3510s can be stacked to window any number of H.264 streams to a single display. The N4321 audio transceiver is a cost-effective solution 
for integrating N2600 audio with analog audio systems. The transceiver can decode the audio stream from any SVSI encoder and output balanced or unbalanced two-channel analog audio. It also has the ability to encode two-channel analog audio onto the network with the SVSI decoders. N2600 devices like other SVSI encoders and decoders are packed with their own features. A few of the standouts I'd like to highlight are host play, local play, and an act. Host play is most often used to ensure that end users never see a blank image on their display, but it can also provide a simple digital signage solution. Host play is built into every SVSI encoder and allows image and audio files to be uploaded and configured into image playlists. Encoders can be configured to stream a single image or a playlist of images with custom animation rates, either when source video is unavailable or when triggered by a command. In a meeting room, for instance, host play can be configured to show a branded image with instructions for the room until a user connects their laptop. Local play works similarly but is a feature of the decoder instead of showing image content when a source is not present. Decoders show the image when not receiving a network video stream. An act is built into every encoder and decoder and provides built-in control for IP devices that is triggered by system events. When an encoder or decoder powers on, a source is connected or a source is disconnected, custom IP commands can be sent to any device. In a simple system, plugging a laptop into an encoder may cause the power on command to be sent to the display. In another instance, devices may be configured to send a notification to the IT service management system when a dedicated room source is disconnected. The N2600 series devices benefit from the same tools and technologies that have made all SVSI solutions simple to deploy, manage, and control. Enable is the free, easy to use software utility designed for use in the configuration, operation, and troubleshooting of SVSI equipment. Initial configuration is made simple by the ability to auto-discover SVSI devices on the network. The device's web interface is then just a click away. Individual device settings can be configured through the intuitive web interface. Large numbers of devices can also be configured in bulk with the CSV configuration capabilities of Enable. CSV files can be prepared and reviewed in advance using a spreadsheet application such as Excel and can even be reused as a template for future projects. A configuration CSV file consists of a list of the settings that will be configured for each device, as well as the serial number and MAC address for each device. All our encoders and decoders ship with a label on the box that contains a barcode for both the MAC address and the serial number. A simple USB barcode scanner can be used to import that data into the spreadsheet very quickly. Any device setting can be configured in the spreadsheet and loading the file through Enable will configure all devices in the system at once. All SVSI devices, including the N2600 series encoders and decoders, use an open control API we call Direct Control. Each device is controllable via TCP IP direct socket commands via the device API address, making them simple to integrate no matter the control system being used. Hi. I'm Colin Mahoney and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Video and Control Products here at Harman Professional. We're really excited to be launching the 2600 series today and we hope you're enjoying the launch. Um, the 2600 series shares a lot of the same DNA as our other SVSI products, but it has enough new features and enough uh, differences that we really wanted to sit down and talk to Kyle about some of those, uh, some of those new features and some of the differences and some of the ideas that went into uh, the making of the product. So, Thanks, Kyle, for sitting with us and talking. Um, the first question I have is about the, the new encoders. So we're calling them multi-codec dual stream encoders. Um, I understand they can stream you know, both the MWC stream and the H.264, but what are some of the, the details of that? Well, thanks for uh, having me, Colin, and, and inviting me to uh, partake in the questioning here. Um, 
so some of the uh, the features right of, of MWC and uh, the H264 um, the, the the encoder itself has a MWC right the codec motion wavelet codec and that's the high quality low latency 4k 6444 we also have the h264 stream uh, as part of the encoder and that's really the secondary uh, stream that it does okay. now the 26 the n2600 uh, models that have the s designation uh, stands for streaming right is, is where we've got that from that is what has the h264 or and mwc um, the N2600S models allow for MWC streaming only. You, you can disable the H264, or you both have MWC and H264 streaming. So tell me a little bit more about this MWC. What, is that, what does that stand for and what does that uh, codec really do? Sure, so MWC is Motion Wavelet Compression. Um, it's a 4K60, 444, uh, you know, ultra high quality, you know, codec. Um, it's uh, great for, you know, that the in-room experience where, you know, you've got some sort of reference to a live presentation. You know, you're not going to detect any of the, you know, the following of the mouse. So real the low mouse, latency. It, absolutely, right, as it moves around the screen. Um, you know, that, that's really, you know, it's, the, it's a high bandwidth uh, a stream at that point. So it's really good for video? Yep, so it's excellent for video. It's excellent for uh, looking at spreadsheets, looking at PowerPoints, you know, that fixed content that is traditionally a little bit more difficult to actually reproduce through network AV. Okay, so just a high quality one gig codec for video within a, within the room, within the building. Yes. And then you've also added the H.264. Uh, absolutely, so we've added a, a secondary stream uh, as an H.264. Um, and that's available as either 720p or a 1080p encoding to the network. Okay. Um, and really what the, what the idea there was is that in a lot of the hybrid environments that we have today, you know, post-pandemic, there's always a remote component, it feels like, at some point. And what this allows for is streaming to uh, internet services such as Panopto or YouTube, uh, you know, Facebook, Wowza, where your audience may not all be able to be in the same room together. So we're allowing and enabling folks to be able to have a distance component to really bring everybody into that meeting. Okay, but we've had, uh, we have the N3000 series, mm -hmm. which is an H.264 uh, series from SVSI. So what's kind of the difference between the H.264 on the N3000 and now on this 2600 series? Good question. So one of the big differences is, is that, you know, as we all know, the N3000 is, is, is a little older, you know. Um, so this is, it's newer technology. In right, the 2600? In the, in the N2600, this is up-to-date technology. Um, you know, a lot of it is cutting edge on the H.264 side. But we're also improving on the user experience in the H.264 settings by allowing profiles. Um, and what those profiles allow you to do is, as the user, with very little effort, if you will, Put in the certain settings that you know of, right? Your your URL or your your password or, or your pass key, if you if you have one, to get that stream sent to your uh, provider. So within H.264, there are lots of different settings that you need to configure so that you can customize that stream and it'll work with Panopto or Wowza or YouTube or whomever. Correct. So a lot of those you know a lot of those settings we're we're taking care of uh, behind the scenes for you. Um, and then that way it's less burden on the user. Now I don't have to go and look it up and find those settings and input them all individually. I can just choose Panopto from the drop-down list. You choose Panopto and then you input the Panopto specific information that is, it's looking for, URL or a password. Great. Hit save and you're off and running. And what's the list of those providers that we have profiles for? Sure, so the, the current list that we have is Panopto, YouTube, Wowza, uh, Facebook um, are the, uh, the ones that are set right now, but we're always willing to take recommendations and suggestions okay. on other streaming platforms that are available. Okay, great. 
Um, so in addition to those two streams, the MWC stream and the H.264 stream, there's also video preview. That's new to SVSI? It, that, is, that is new to SVSI. We, uh, we've incorporated video preview uh, within the N2600 series, not just the S uh, models, the entire N2600 series. Um, and it is a uh, MJPEG or motion JPEG image uh, that's captured every two seconds. Um, and then it's, uh, it's viewed uh, on the, the web page of the encoder or the decoder okay. as a preview. So that's helpful, I guess that's really helpful for like an installer. I can plug in my source to my encoder and I can just check that it's seeing a source even without the network being set up or the decoder being set up or TVs on the wall. And that's a, that's a good point, absolutely. So, you know, that allows for uh, remote troubleshooting um, by, you know, if uh, a user plugs in a source, you can pull up the web page to make sure it's what, you, it's what you're seeing. As well as on the decoder, if perhaps the displays aren't installed yet, they can, uh, you know, the installers can push everything through, log into the decoder, and verify that in Make fact sure what they're seeing streaming on the network is streaming correctly. Um, so where can I view all those? I, I go to the web, web page for the individual device? Absolutely, so you go, uh, you go to the web page uh, for the encoder or the decoder, as well as in N command, um, if you hover, uh, just move your mouse and you hover over top of the encoder or decoder, you'll have a preview window uh, of what that is. And then in a later firmware update coming this year, uh, Enable will have okay. the same capability of hovering over top of the encoder or the decoder. So I can really quickly go through and just check all my, all my devices. Yes. That's great. One of the other big features you've added to the 2600 series is this USB 2.0 streaming. So we've had some USB before in the past on SVSI series, or we have it on SVSI series today, but it's much different on the 2600 series. So can you explain a little bit more about that? Uh, absolutely. So traditionally, SVSI has only used uh, KVM, keyboard and mouse. Now with the N2600... So it's like HID devices only? HID mm -hmm. only. Um, now with the N2600 series, all models support HID, HID, the keyboard mouse, as well as USB 2.0. And the USB 2.0 is a full bandwidth USB 2.0 capable of 480 megs of that transport. I know we've had a lot of questions from some people that have heard this already. How are we fitting another 480 megabits on top of the 4K video and the H.264 video and the audio and the control that's already on that, uh, on that one gigabit Ethernet pipe. Absolutely right, and it's a lot to it's a lot to try to comprehend, right? Because you know the the human mind tells you right away, you're over, you're over, right. you're at the max, right? But it's interesting in that with the way that we've designed it to work, is network is 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 we're using the full duplex capability of that one gigabit cable. When I say full duplex, you're getting one gigabit both transmit and receive. So that's just how Ethernet works. That's in how general. Ethernet works. Um, you know, uh, so what we're doing with the USB 2.0 is at the decoder is where you're going to plug in that USB 2.0 camera or sound bar. You know, that, that's where traditionally you're going to plug that device in. And the decoder is going to transmit that signal, that USB 2.0 signal, back to the encoder that it's been subscribed to for, for the computer. That's on one path, right? That's on the, the one path of that full duplex. But on the other side of that, the decoder is receiving the video, the audio, the control for API. Um, that's where all of that's coming from, right? So they two are, are separated in fact of one side has USB 2.0 and one side's got yeah, everything else. Yeah, at least else. the majority of that data traffic is going in opposite directions. Correct. Okay. So another one of the big feature changes that we're talking about is this enhanced security. So I guess what new features are we adding to what we've had in the past from SVSI? Great question, Colin. So a lot of SVSI has various types of security features in them. And we've taken the lessons and, and the best of that and we've put them all together uh, to really give it a feature-packed security solution. 
you know, one of the things that we've done is, is we've implemented LDAP, but also LDAP, uh, secure LDAP. Uh, we've implemented 802.1x, but also variations of the 802.1x authentication profiles that are used, really just increasing and enhancing the complexity of a secure system on the network. We're also looking um, and driving for uh, being able to be placed into government facilities, high security environments. And as we know, with government facilities comes JITIC certification mm -hmm. along with that. So we are, plan to go through that testing? Absolutely, we are pursuing that uh, full steam ahead, if you will, um, as part so of the So everything's built in to be able to kind of pass that? Correct. Um, you know, some of the other advanced features are FIPS. Uh, you know, we're looking at FIPS 140-3 uh, certification to be brought into the box as well. Um, you know, just again, continuing to move forward in the direction to ensure everything is secure. Okay. That sounds great. Um, that'll be the, really the first SPSI product that has that JITIC certification. Uh, yes, th this will be the first AMX networked AV component um, to achieve JITIC certification. Okay, so I only have one more question for you, but it is it's the hardest question, and it's the question that we get asked the most, and that's kind of what's next. So, so what's what's coming next from SPSI? What's coming maybe next for uh, N2600 series? Um, I know we've been talking about uh, compatibility with uh, N3000 and compatibility specifically with the N3000 windowing processor. Yes. But what about a, maybe a 2600 windowing processor? <laughs> That's always the good question, right? Is, is what's always next. Um, with, with today's presentation and, and the questions specifically geared towards the N2600, let's definitely keep it there. <laughs> You're right. Um, you know, I can't really, can't really divulge behind the curtain too much right now. Um, but I, I'll pull back the curtain for a peek just to tell you that we're always looking to increase the ability for resolution, higher resolutions, lower bandwidth across the network, but still maintain that, that high fidelity uh, image. We're still looking to uh, you know, drive the video window processing uh, that we have capabilities and expand that um, into a growing uh, subset of features and functionality. So it's a little bit there for you, but yeah, behind right. there for what we've got. But uh, we're excited. I'm, I'm thrilled for the N2600. Yeah, uh, I think it looks really great. I hope uh, everyone else is excited to see it. Uh, thanks for sitting down and answering some questions for me. Appreciate you having me, Colin. And uh, thanks for asking those, those tough questions to uh, get the information out. All right, thanks. That's the first look of the new AMX SVSI N2600 series. Encoders and decoders with high quality 4K60 video performance and a host of added features at a surprisingly affordable cost. Thank you all for joining us today. We can't wait for you to experience the N2600s for yourself. The N2600 series is available for order today with units shipping soon. You can learn more by visiting amx.com.